We come to you from State College, Pennsylvania for the annual Blue White Penn State Spring Game from Beaver Stadium. A crowd filling in for a preview of a team that has big goals for 2024. Should be a fun one today. Bring it inside. Jason Ross Jr., Matt Bellin, Adam Brenneman with us as well. Matt, let's start with this new look coaching staff beginning on the offensive side. Andy Kolicki is a guy who's had had great success, came from Kansas, he's had great success with different quarterbacks, and he's one of those guys who can blend them, understands the schemes, will do that exceptionally well. Tom Allen on the defensive side, coming over from Indiana as a head coach, has always been the guy who's been able to get done, a lot done with less talent. Now we'll be able to see him do a lot with more talent. Well, Penn State went 6-1 and one on the home field last year. They're going to have some big moments where they run out of that tunnel. When the season does roll around in the fall, they will have huge home games in the Big Ten schedule that will take place right here at Beaver Stadium. They're building up for the first run out. A sneak preview of 2024 here that this fan base is going to be able to watch. Getting amped up for some new faces that will be on display today. Some early enrollees that we'll get to talk about. And, of course, some key returners as well. And this new look coaching staff that Matt just mentioned. Just a few more moments and building up until the first moment of 2024 that these fans can soak in. Now they're getting closer to coming out. Mentioned the new staff around James Franklin, but at the heart of it all, he's still here and knows the expectations that are around this program. They're big once again, heading into 2024. They're coming off another 10-win season, another New Year's Six Bowl appearance. But I set on a playoff appearance at the end of the day for the upcoming season. All that work starting up well before they can get there. We're going to see a glimpse of what that work has paid off in today, the annual blue white game. as the starting QB. He'll be on display today. Everything he's worked on in the offseason. Meanwhile, let's go down to Adam who's on the field with James Franklin. Thanks, Jason. Coach, where do you want to see your quarterback, Drew Aller, take the next step today? Yeah, today, you know, it's just about doing what he's done all spring, distribute the ball, make great decisions. I think last year he threw like 26 touchdown passes and two interceptions. Just got to build on that and it's consistent week in and week out production, not just from him, but all the pieces around him. What's impressed you the most about your team through the first 14 spring practices? It's just been very physical, it's been very competitive. We really haven't had this depth in spring ball before. I think that's been a real positive for us to build on and evaluate our team. Appreciate it, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Coach. We're going to see, get to see Drew Aller and company coming up next on the other side. Annual blue-white spring game at Beaver Stadium coming up on Big Ten Network. Welcome back to Beaver Stadium. Getting set for kickoff. The blue-white game, Jason Ross Jr., Matt Millen, Adam Brenneman will be down on the field today. Ryan Barker 
getting set to kick things off. Landon Montgomery back to return. As you can see, he will be solo by himself back there, awaiting this kick. For the most part, we'll have a traditional spring game format today. We're going 13 minute quarters in the first half. Coaches could decide to go 12, 11, or 10 minutes in the second half based on time. Traditional scoring. And as you see, Bo Corbila coming out, and he'll start off on this blue unit as the QB. Of course, saw a blend of him, particularly his legs, with Drew Aller a season ago. Expect to see those two being used in tandem when the season rolls around, especially with the new OC. Andy Kotelnicki will dip into his philosophies that he brings over from Kansas throughout the course of the afternoon with the flag being thrown here. And it looks like a false Not start a good to way to roll. start your <laughs> offense. <laughs> You see, it talked about this game format that I was mentioning here. So, traditional football scoring, 13 minute quarters in the opening half. That could vary in the second half. They get regular timing in the last two minutes of each half. So, keep an eye on that to potentially go through some scenarios. Always something to keep an eye on during spring games. Avila's first quick throw is caught. Looks like Schlaffer on the receiving end there. Jason, one of the things you were talking about um, just coming in with the, the quarterbacks, and I think uh, Kotelnicki's strength is to be able to deal with and work with different types of quarterbacks. Tribula is one of those kids who, who does have the ability to take off and run, and they have a game plan specifically for him. Drew Aller not as, uh, not as apt to be able to take off with his legs, but he can adapt as well. So I think it's a, that was an excellent hire. <clears throat> Real is so shifty. Meanwhile, let's go down to Adam on the field. Adam, it's a, a pretty windy day down there. Thanks, Jason. It is extremely windy down here. One of the windier days I can remember in my time in State College. I was talking to former Penn State quarterback Christian Hackenberg before the game. He said this is extremely challenging for quarterbacks. And the hardest part is just not thinking about the win. Remembering that it's not that big of a difference between how you actually throw the football. It'll be a challenge for Drew Aller and Bo Perbula today, especially as they learn this new offense. Adam, a good day for defensive guys like Matt Millen. Yeah, well, I'll take that every time. <laughs> it's got a day. Now, one of the things you remember, one of the last things they that they had on the rules was there's no hitting the quarterbacks, just so you know. So if it looks like he's eluding everybody, there's a reason. <laughs> but Prebula is one of those guys. Prebula is one of those guys who can really rely on his legs. He can use it to be able to take off and run, but he can also use it in the passing game as well. And you saw that early when they tried to roll him out, be able to use his feet that way. So I think the biggest thing for both offense on the white and the blue is going to be how fast their offensive lines come together, because that's usually the toughest thing for any team to be able to to uh, get on the same page as your offensive lines. That'll be a three and a half for Rila's unit. So uh, Caden Saunders there on the return, and now a white ball to come out for James Franklin. And in the midst of that huddle, you have Drew Aller, your returning starter at QB. Like Coach said in the meetings yesterday, like he just told to Adam, hey, if you look at 25 touchdowns, two interceptions, someone We're tells you that's what your quarterback's going to do, you sign up for it any day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and also keep this in mind. This is the first team offensive line with Alar. That's the second team offensive line going against the first team defensive line, which we just saw in that first series. Bit of a, a mishandle and blunder on the opening snap for Aller's unit. Recovered by Cam Wallace down there. Let's look at it again. That's a high, high snap. snap. That's a. Uh, that's that's one of those things we're talking about, right? It's uh, Nick Dawkins the first time he's got that snap in game game time. That's the starting center. So everybody's just got to kind of calm down. It's your first time out. 
Just do what you've been doing all practice long from for the first four, uh, two weeks of practice. Adler flips it out. This time has his first completion. Able to connect with Wallace. Going to see a slew of different running backs in the backfield today. Katron Allen has missed the spring, so he won't play. But you have Nicholas Singleton, who we'll see, of course. That was the dynamic duo last couple of years. Uh, Allen and Singleton have some other guys in the mix that we'll get to look at. Cam Wallace in the backfield, who recovered that fumble, and then on the next play gets his first catch of the day. Well protected that time and has another connection with Liam Clifford, who is a guy that Matt has maybe gone under the radar a little bit, but the coaching staff loves everything he's doing from leadership, weight room, practice. He's been really good emerging at that receiver position that we're going to have an eye on today. Yeah, he runs pretty decent routes, and right there, he just they're just playing a, a zone, sitting in a zone, and because of Aller had time to be able to sit and throw, he sees the field a lot better than he did just a year ago. Obviously, it's his second year here, so. But uh, he was able to make that throw with nice protection. Goes right to Saunders, but he is promptly met. That's A.J. Harris making the play. So Harris, the transfer from Georgia at corner. This is a good sign for Penn State fans. Now, this is a nice job of the corners. Look, they had a great secondary a year ago, and they want to continue on that. So they brought in Harris, and he's doing, he's had a really nice spring, right? And what you saw right there is great awareness. And so he's going to he's going to uh, get that quick throw. You want to you want to be able to jump that receiver as quickly as you can. And he did a nice job with it. They're walked up now. Looks like they're going to play a little bit of man. So let's see what we got outside. Another good test for those new corners. This time they're looking for the one-on-one -on -one matchup down the sideline and out of the reach of Saunders. <laughs> looking for him deep that time. Dinkins in on the coverage. Yeah, and he's got him out of the slot. And he's that's just a nice job. He does a nice job getting on his horse right away. Dinkins does a good job. Like Saunders had probably a step on him to the outside, a, a better throw to, would have been a big completion. But uh, I like the fact that they're going to go with a little bit more man coverage here, which we didn't see a lot of a year ago. But actually, actually, we did see pretty much of it with, when I think about what Manny ran. Hole opens up for Wallace, tiptoeing down the sideline. We'll see if he has enough for the first down. Looks like he does to move the chains. You mentioned the man coverage is also a good way to test out these new corners. And there's that hole that opens yeah, up. Yeah, it's nicely blocked. A nice job getting out in front and getting into the second level and it allows him to be able to make that first down. Well, it's not a really big guy. He's got some great quickness. Catches the ball pretty well out of the backfield. And he does a nice job in pass protection. That's one of the things that stood out, surprised me for not being a real big person. Redshirt freshman in the backfield with Aller. Aller pressured, got it away, but pass intended for Saunders. Off the mark, right at the pressure that time. A D line for Penn State that was the best in the nation last year at stopping the run. The numbers were so impressive. Top three defense in the country. You're feeling some holes, but on the interior in particular, it, it looks really good again, and you're making some adjustments on the edges too. Yeah, and that's that's where you got to be. You have to be able to get to the quarterback, right? So you have to be able to rush the passer. They have some capable guys able to do it, and they'll be back again, obviously, to get after it this year. Deception on display that time going up the middle. Talk about the defensive interior and numbers that you saw Wallace run into there. Were first, that's FBS rankings, by the way, in the country the last couple of seasons here combined. Yeah, they, they've done a nice job in this defense. Manny Diaz did that. And of course, now Tom Allen's going to take that thing over. And Tom's very similar with what he can do. Tom Allen, you can see him right there. One of the things that has always impressed me with those Indiana teams was they always would give you a fight. You had to work to beat them. They didn't quite have enough of the bullets in the gun to be able to make uh, to make all the plays, but uh, he has them here. So it'll be interesting to watch how Tom Allen develops this defense as the season goes on. Rapelier made the catch there. Dakari Nelson made the hit. 
And Tom Allen, I, I love him as a, a motivator. Because you have those clips that have gone viral of him talking to his teams in the locker room during the Indiana days. So familiar, of course, with the conference as a head coach. His interview process was about two weeks, most of which was in person. And those were just really good conversations he had with James Franklin. He wanted to truly get to know everyone here and now finds himself in a good spot. A great defensive mind. Trying to go over the scene that time, in and out of the hands of Saunders. So let that one back. Yeah, that's what you, got. what you have to be able to do, first of all, you got to hold on to the ball. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to be able to protect. You see Cam uh, Wallace inside doing a nice job of stepping up and, and sticking the, the linebacker who came on. Gave him a chance to be able to make that throw. So you're going to see an aggressive defense out of Tom Allen. He likes to blitz. He also likes a lot of man coverage. And uh, he's going to have some good guys to be able to work with on the outside, getting up the field. Be able to rush the passer. Vila so back out there going over the middle as a connection with Fleming. So first catch for Julian Fleming of the day. And a guy that we have our eye on transferring from Ohio State back in his home state. Out of high school, he was recruited heavily by Penn State at several visits, chose the Buckeyes, but now what's almost been like an eight-year journey back into wearing a uniform that a lot of people in the state thought he'd be wearing earlier, but he is wearing it now, most importantly, and a huge addition to this receiver crew. This time, a quick dash up the middle by Quentin Martin. Let's go down to Adam on the field with more on Fleming. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you mentioned it. Julian Fleming broke everyone in Pennsylvania's heart when he left home to go to Ohio State. He was a five-star recruit, number four ranked player in all of college football at one point. I talked to Julian yesterday. He said that he's now back home where he belongs, and he feels like everything in his career has led him to this moment. Now, Penn State's going to make the playoff for the first time in program history. He's going to have to play like that five-star recruit that everyone in this program believes he is. Jason? And he debated between drafts as that ball is lofted downfield and find its way into the hands. It's on the weed lead, but it, it, it thought about draft, thought about where to transfer, and of course went the transfer route. And definitely really cool to see him back in this state and in a program where, again, a lot of people thought he would end up at some point or another. Yeah, in that particular play, I don't know. Somebody, somebody looked like somebody blew a route. Yeah. Because uh, Kabila got back there after he threw the ball, and he just he just stopped and looked at it like, what what was that? So looked like somebody zigged when they should have zagged. So now bring back out Drew Aller. We can crack the scoreboard first. Minutes ago in this opening quarter. Running clock has been moving quickly. Speaking of quick, there is a reception on a nice route over the middle. That's not made by Amari Evans. They love his speed, and you see it on display there. A.J. Harris on the coverage right there. They'll show you a little bit of man, and then they, they're going to back off it. They'll play a soft coverage. With a nice job stepping into that throw right where it had to be, right in front of the safety. Talked about A.J. Harris, one of the transfers at the corner spot. Jalen Kimber, another who's transferred from Florida. A room that is very competitive right now and wide open in terms of competition with the names they've lost. Another throw down the middle, and that one out of the reach and incomplete, looking for Evans once again. So one of the things we're talking about, just um, Andy Kotelnecki. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, so we got the end of the quarter here, but uh, nice protection. And you have to have good protection because there's running a lot of crossing routes, which take a lot of time. James Franklin and his coaching staff trying to establish what things will look like heading into the summertime, wrapping up the spring with the annual blue-white game here at Beaver Stadium. No score between the blue and white after one quarter. Back in Beaver Stadium for the second quarter. It is the Nittany Lions' birthday. He was just gifted with the 2024 official whiteout shirt. He looks pretty good for 120. He does, doesn't he? 
we all aspire to be like the Nittany Lion. And these fans can't wait to wear that whiteout shirt as well when the season does roll around. They'll have some big home games here to look forward to. He moves like he's like a college junior or something. I don't get it. He's kind of like 20 a years old. Yep. Still moving and grooving. And we got a flag down. Let's check in with Adam. Thanks, Jason. I'm here with former Penn State tight end Theo Johnson, current top tight end in the NFL draft. Theo, how has your time at Penn State prepared you for this draft process? I mean, my time at Penn State was awesome. Uh, the way Coach Franklin runs his program is a tight ship, um, super disciplined with everything. So the transition's been very smooth, and I feel very well prepared. What can we expect from this tight end room in 2024? Yeah, honestly, I'm so excited for, for what these guys are going to do. I think Tyler Warren, I've been telling everybody, he's going to be a real standout this next year. You're going to see a lot more Andrew Rapier and, and Khalil Dinkins this year. So I'm super excited for what they're going to do for us. You predicted a couple of months ago to me that you were going to run a 4 5 40 at the Combine. It came true. So now I want another prediction. What round are you getting drafted in? I'll say, I'll say late round two. That's my round two? I love it. Well, Theo, good luck, man. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's always good. A couple of guys who know the tight end position very well. Penn State, of course, a lineage of superb tight ends. Restocking there again this year. Tyler Warren is back for another year. Khalil Dinkins will be there. We've seen Andrew Rappelier make a catch. They've got the five-star freshman tight end, Luke Reynolds, who we're going to get a glimpse at today. That'll be a good position once again for the Nittany Lions this year. That was a really nice throw right there. And uh, and a nice job. Malik McLean did a good job getting his body between him and the defender. The ball was right where it needed to be to the inside. Well thrown. Malik is 6'4", 207. Mass that that body is is big and could be very useful. Another player that Cody Nicky pointed out to us among the receivers that have blossomed throughout this morning. Nice, nice catch made here and a burst. Down the sideline, Harrison Wallace getting involved. The Alabama native feels like he could be due for a breakout year. Harrison Wallace does a nice job. This ball comes out really quick. Allar gets rid of it quick, and now he just has a good instincts to get inside and then back out. Picks up the first down. Wallace. Wow. Yeah, just well done. Ball's coming out quick. You like to see that. Good short protection inside. Wallace, the guy who struggled with injuries, but if he can stay healthy, he could get on track. Meanwhile, it'll be the white team getting on track first in this spring game as Quentin Martin finds the end zone to break the scoring seal. Yeah, the difference in that play right there, Quentin Martin does a nice job of just following the blocking up, up front. And that's the first team offensive line did a nice job of coming off the ball. Martin being able to just follow what's there. Nice job inside. See how he pressed the center there behind Dawkins, the center, and then bounced it out to the outside. And just, just well done. Quentin Martin out of Bell Vernon High School had over a thousand yards, 16 touchdowns in his senior year of high school. A guy who can really catch it out of the backfield as well. Katron Allen had some great things to say about Martin and his potential. And he's the first player we see in the end zone today here at Beaver Stadium. All good running backs run with their eyes, meaning your eyes take you where your feet are going to go, right? That's exactly where you, what you have to be able to do. You have to see it first. Did a nice job with that. Let's check back in with Adam. Thanks, Jason. I'm with former Penn State quarterback, Penn State legend, Sean Clifford. Sean, thinking about your time at Penn State, what's your favorite memory? Oh, man. It's hard to pick, but I would say definitely the whiteout. I mean, it's, I know it's cliche. But whenever I come back in here, that's always the first game that I think about the whiteout. Just the electricity, the fans, just the feeling you get when you step in the stadium. Every time is special, but the whiteout is a little extra special. Yeah, you know a lot about the expectation for being the quarterback of Penn State and the outside noise that comes with it. What would be your advice for Drew Allen on how to handle it going into year two? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. I, I talked to Drew as much as possible, and, and, and Bo as well. And really, at the end of the day, it's about just silencing the noise and just focusing on the day to day. It's, it's taking one step, one day at a time, and making sure you're improving so that way the guys around you see that, continue to improve, and 
It'll take care of itself. I know you've been around this team and, and this this coaching staff a bunch. What have you seen from new offensive coordinator Andy Kotelnicki to give you hope for 2024? Yeah, I mean, I'm having conversations with my brother. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's uh, windy out here, man. It, it's about, what, 30, 40 mile per hour gusts out here? Um, but really, at the end of the day, I, I was talking to Liam a bunch this spring, and the creativity is what I'm hearing. I think it's going to be really exciting to just see how he grows within the system for, for Drew, year two of playing, second system. I know when I had that new fresh flavor with Coach Yurisich after after a year with Shiraka, it was, it was good to get into a new system, be able to kind of feel out some new plays. But really, it's, I'm hearing a lot of creativity, which it makes me really excited to watch. What are you looking forward to most in year two in the NFL? Just continue to learn. I mean, when you when you get to be in the lineage of, of Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to now Jordan Love, the opportunity to, to learn and grow, you got to take that every single day and maximize it. I appreciate it, man. I'm happy for you. Proud of you. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Right, thanks, Adam. Thanks, Sean. Well, Sean's brother, Liam, who we mentioned there, already made a catch today. By the way, Ethan Grunkmeyer is now in at QB. First time we have seen the freshman quarterback. Number four star recruit out of Ohio. See his credentials there. Our first glimpse at him at third QB that we've seen so far today. That's a nice big arm on him. I, I watched some film on him and I, I liked what I saw. He had a good presence in the pocket. He was able to see, you know, see the field pretty well. Ball comes out nice. He's got a nice strong arm. There's a lot to like about him. Holds his high school's record for career passing yards, touchdowns, 3,500 yards, 39 touchdowns a senior season. Heard Sean there talking about the creativity that Andy Cotton and could bring. That was the MO of what we saw at Kansas the last couple of years of program that up until the last couple of years was not known for their product on the football field. They had scored 99 points combined their last two games of this past season. They became known for that creativity and shiftiness, and perhaps we could see some of that where it fits here at Penn State. So the, where the creativity will, will really shine will be his ability to use all the different talents that Penn State the roster has. This is a this is a roster that has a lot of different skills, different skill sets, and when you can when you can use them and, and add them into the into the uh, flavor of the game, it makes a big difference. It's not just like you have the same thing over and over. You're going to count on one guy. You got a bunch of different people with different skill sets that he can take advantage of. Guys, one of my favorite things that Andy Kotick, he told us yesterday in our meeting was that he wants to dominate the time between the whistles on offense. What's that mean? It's the time from the from the, the tackle to the next snap. You do that by tempo on offense, playing fast, using different personnel grouping. So we'll see some crazy stuff, maybe even two quarterbacks on the field at the same time. We did that some at Kansas last year. Yeah, to be an offense owns that time between snaps which is really cool to hear him talk about how you can dictate at that point in time and you see the list of schools here James Franklin was really impressed that he has done it at schools where it's not easy to do it you look at Kansas you look at Buffalo he helped those programs rise up to where they were able to reach at the pinnacle of him being there it's an exciting time for him to join this staff yeah it's just it's interesting for me to watch how some coaches are just able to use different skill sets with guys like Prabula right here with his feet. He'll take advantage of that. Uh, he'll, he'll do that all season long. Then you're going to have, you know, different. the tight ends have different skill sets. The wide receivers have different skill sets. Some guys are speed guys. Some guys are quick guys. Some guys are just good route runners. Uh, so, I mean, you just have to take advantage of the whole thing. He's, he's done a nice job with that. James Franklin also said, can you as an offensive coordinator bring a package that has enough diversity to fit those different sure. personalities yeah. on the field? Maybe even a different game planning depending on the opponent. Do you have an advantage at the defensive line? Wide receiver spot maybe one week to the next. And being able to do that, they are able to do that at Kansas. And you talked about being able to use two QBs. Could see it maybe pretty frequently. Probilo fakes the throw there and they go up the middle. On a fourth down try here. This is another element of these spring games where you can work on different scenarios, of course. So, the most important part of all of that is you need to learn the skill set of each player. It takes a lot of time. So, he's been exposed now to just 14, this is the 15th practice, right? But he'll, 
the more he's around, the more he's going to understand to see. We, we had a conversation about that when we sat down and talked to him. And it's uh, he's he's on the front end, front end of it. And the other part of that is the players have to know the coach too, what the expectations are. Perbulo under pressure there. And by the way, when we get to the final two minutes of the second quarter and the fourth quarter, we'll go to the clock stop right now. As you can tell, it's it's running and moving by pretty quickly. Because when you start talking about you know all those different things you can do, a lot of offensive coordinators, what they'll do is they get so enamored with all the different things that they can do that they forget what they do well. And so you have to be careful with that. And that's one of the things that Cole Nicky's done a nice job with is he knows that they can do well and he'll stick with it. This time they go back to the ground and Wallace turning his legs. He's had a, a good day. Cam Wallace, 26 in white. He's having a nice job on the inside. Nick Dawkins, the center. Uh, he's from Parkland High School down in the Lehigh Valley. And he's getting his shot at the at the center spot this year. And he's done a nice job here in the spring. Big strong kid, really smart, understands the, the all the offense and the making all the calls and getting everybody on the same page and that's what you need your center to be able to do. He's done a nice job this spring with it. The offensive line the spots you're trying to replace your center and both tackles. Provilo will loft this one up into one on one he coverage goes out of bounds at intentions for Saunders there. They brought a little bit of heat up the middle and he had to get rid of it fast so did a nice job of getting rid of the ball. Dinkins is on the coverage, brings up fourth down. We talked about the offensive line that's protecting these quarterbacks. We know Olu Fashnu could potentially be a, a top 10 pick in the draft, one of your star tackles. They're also trying to replace Caden Wallace and Hunter Norzad. See different names stepping up in those center and tackle positions. Of course, those competitions will roll over into the summer and training camp in the fall. There's a lot of work to get done here. Yep. The offensive line. Look, the offensive line. The offensive line takes the longest to get everybody on the same page. It involves the most people. You the, the down five guys, plus you get your tight ends involved. There's a lot of calls that go on inside and then really what ends up happening the longer you play you get your own little calls between yourselves that only you know and you just you just get everything comes together it starts to gel when you get more familiarity. So Matt you mentioned you get 15 practices at this stage of time but walk me through that timeline of when maybe more of the positional battles will start to take place or what it looks like in the yeah, summer time. That's, that yeah, that's in training camp. The training camp, and, and again, it's it's a truncated time now. It's, just, it's not a lot of uh, time that you have there in the college game. So Coach Franklin's got to be able to get a lot of information out of not very many practices. Uh, and when they go to camp, they'll, they'll have a better idea and they'll start to work. Like you won't see as many guys in and out you get the guys who you think are your best players and you put them in those positions and you let them develop and start to gel. Landon Montgomery on the carry. Grunkmeyer back in at QB. That's usually why defenses are ahead of offenses in the beginning of the season. Defense is more you can just go ahead and attack things. Offense is more we got to gel first, get everybody on the same page so that we can take advantage of what you're doing. And so it, it takes a little longer to develop on that side. They go back to oh, the ground. Nice. nice shifty move there. Putting a foot in the ground was London Montgomery, the Scranton, Pennsylvania native who went to Scranton Prep, had some big seasons in their backfield. This is nice here by Montgomery. See right here, boom, nice cut to the outside. That's what I talk about. You're running with your eyes. Really well done there. Guy who has some great footwork was also a basketball player. Ran track in high school too. A schlopper, another Pennsylvania native, makes the catch there. 
By the way, that process you talked about off offense, maybe trying to catch up with the defense, can that be expedited though with having a year or two starting quarterback with Drew Allen? Yeah, it, absolutely, that can happen. The quarterback position is the toughest one to develop. Everybody, I mean, you know that. But the offensive line is is the group that you got to be able to protect. You got to be able to run block. You got to be able to all be on the same page. And that's uh, easier said than done at times. Going on a crossing route that time. Once again, it's Schlaffer on the catch. King Mack made the tackle. A guy who could be a key part of the secondary for Penn State. Meyer gets that pass away. Did they blow it dead prior to the pass? Well, no, that would have been close. It was close. If he had gotten hit in the backfield there, he got a nice rush on that one. I think he kind of pulled up at the end. Coach Franklin's uh, telling him what he wants done here. 40 seconds left in his half. And you see the clock stop because we are in the traditional clock stoppage rules for the final two minutes of each half in today's blue white game. He's Let's go to Adam who's going to tell us about one of the defensive changes being made for Penn State this year. Jason, we just saw Abdul Carter on that sack. He moved from linebacker to defensive end this spring. Normally in college football when you change positions, it's a, it has a negative connotation, but not this one. Tom Allen told us that Abdul Carter asked him specifically, can I move to defensive end to get closer to the line of scrimmage, make more of an impact in the game? And by all accounts, the move has gone extremely well. He's had a phenomenal spring. And guys, a number, there's another number 11 that played at Penn State that that move did pr turn out pretty well for. His name's Micah Parsons. And one too bad. It's not one too bad here. It's not too bad in Dallas. Good <laughs> footsteps to follow. Abdul Carter is a natural pass rusher. It makes perfect sense for him to do this. He gets to the line of scrimmage. He get on top of you faster. He has a nice inside outside move. He's he's a natural pass rusher. Carter had 49 tackles last year. That skill set going to translate over the defensive end spot. Kobe King, who's at the heart of that linebacker group still, said he has really liked what he's seen out of Carter shifting over to that spot. Feels like he has all the intangibles to do it. And of course, you do still have Kobe King at the linebacker position. Others that'll be with him there. Carter's departure to the line. You have Tony Rojas, who really kind of started to emerge last year. Dominic DeLuca is another name. Tyler Elsden, Keon Wiley, Tyrese Mills, all guys who could be in the fold. It's, we might see some shifting and possibly a new starter and linebacker this year. Another completion there. Nice, good protection led by the senior. They have, they have a freshman in there right now, and Cooper Cousins, number 50, that center. I've been impressed with him on film. He, he's Pretty aggressive. He has good feet, good balance. That Cooper Cousins, I think he's going to be a good football player for this team. He's got good size, nice length, and he's a smart kid. So you like that combination. Matt, one of the guys are trying to replace that O line that's going to the NFL, Caden Wallace. He got to come back recently and, and get his first look at Cousins at a practice and he said he feels like Cousins is a dog because of the way he practices and just approaches and has a really bright future ahead. That's a good player to point out on that old line and uh, a player that could be part of the future of it. I get those every time. Into the final 20 seconds of this opening half. Aller in at QB. Aller has a completion inside of the 30 and down the sideline goes Caden Saunders. Saunders does a nice job of getting open in that, out on that left side of the field there. And see what kind of route he ran. See what the coverage was on top of it. Nice protection, that's the first thing. Aller was just wide open. Saunders, the Columbus native, a player who is trying to emerge in what could be a receiver group by committee this year. We've seen Julian Fleming, the new addition. So now you got to think situational football here. 11 seconds to go. You got to push the ball into the end zone. You don't want to jump it underneath. He wants to throw it into this into the end zone. Here they go play. right to the end oh, zone and just in and out of the hands of Harrison and Wallace. Harrison Wallace had a chance to make a great catch over the top of his head. That's just a it's a hard catch to make. 
just Justin. about had it. Look at how he's had to track that. That's not easy to do. Got his one hand on it. Would have been a great catch. Again, you got to go right to the end zone right here. LR's got it, and he's he hopefully can get two out of this seven seconds. So the ball's got to come out pretty quick, and it is. They go to the opposite side. Same look, but broken up in the corner of the end zone by A.J. Harris. The transfer from Georgia. Good coverage. Nice job. He stayed on top of him. Watch him. Hands. Good. Now stay right on his hip. Excellent. Turn. You turn when he turns. That's really well done. The ball's a little bit underthrown right here at the end, but he did a really nice job of staying on top of that coverage. All over Malik McLean there. You think about the names departing at corner. Kalen King, NFL caliber corner, Daquan Hardy, Johnny Dixon as well as the field goal is up and good from Brian Barker to end the half. So we saw some Positives, different points, yeah. different positions. Just saw the play A.J. Harris made there. Managed the clock. That was nicely done. Good awareness down there. They got three plays out of that last, what, 11 seconds. That's well done. Yep. So Adams down in the field with Tom Allen. Let's go to him. Thanks, Jason. Coach Allen, what would you see for your defense in the first half that impressed you? Well, the guys are playing fast and playing physical. Uh, I thought we tackled well, which is key. I got a takeaway, which is one of our objectives. Every time we take the field, we want to get three per game. So I thought our guys were just playing fast, and it's a good start for us. You told us yesterday about shots on goal, creating takeaways as a defense. Uh, what goes into that when you're practicing in, in the spring? Well, it's a constant focus. We reward our guys, we keep track of them, and then we also hold them accountable when they don't get the number of shots on goal for every practice. There's a goal every day that we have, and it's about attacking the football properly, teaching what that looks like, because at the end of the day, it's about great takeaways. Appreciate sure, it, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. It's a good man right there, at Tom Allen. One of the best in the business joining the Penn State staff this year, the defensive coordinator, his defense able to force a field goal at the end there. It's a 10 nothing lead for the white team at the half. Welcome back. Halftime here at the annual Blue White Game in State College. The Thon 2024 line dance is taking place here at the half. Thon, by the way, is the largest student run philanthropy in the world, committed to enhancing the lives of children and families battling childhood cancer. The mission focused on providing emotional and financial support to families going through cancer, and community outreach here has been incredible for that cause. This is the Thon 2024 line dance. Great crowd on hand here at State College. Getting a little breather at halftime. White team up 10 0. We'll be back soon here at Beaver Stadium. Back at Beaver Stadium, I've had a ton of really cool interviews today. We've got another one lined up here at the half. Adam Brenneman down on the field with former Penn State QB Christian Hackenberg. Thanks, Jason. I'm here with Penn State legend quarterback. Christian Hackenberg. Christian, you've been through a lot in your career at this place, played a lot of games at Beaver Stadium. What's it mean to be back here today? Uh, it feels great. Even on a spring game, you know, this, this place has phenomenal support. So just being able to get back around these guys and see see what's going on, you know, it's it's always good to be back here. You've seen a lot of Drew Aller, and you spent some time around him. You've done some interviews with him. What gets you excited about the future of Penn State with him at quarterback? I'm really excited about Drew. I think he's got all the pieces. Uh, I think his maturity is just the maturity that naturally comes with being a quarterback at a place like this and in the environment that is college sports now, right? He's, he's got to mature a little bit faster mentally than, than previous uh, generations of kids. So 
I'm just really excited to see him really embrace the, the leadership role of not only the offense but the team and start continuing to make strides as a player because I, he's got all the tools. It's just it's just how does he develop mentally as a leader and, and come into that role and take ownership of the whole process. You know the stakes of being the quarterback at Penn State. What would be your advice to Drew on how to handle the pressure and the, and the expectation? Well, I think it's that, and I talk to him lightly about it. I think it's rely on the guys in the locker room, win the locker room. At the end of the day, that's what matters. And then, you know, now with, with the shift with Coach Koltanecki coming in, trust in your offensive system, learn that like the back of your hand, and really be the guy that everybody turns to for whether it's momentum, knowledge of the offense, expectations of the program. You have an incredible platform to set the standard and the tone for the rest of the football team, not just the offense. So embrace that and continue to roll with it. What what are you most proud of thinking about your career at Penn State? Do you have a favorite moment, favorite memory? Man, listen, it's just I, I've said it before, like, kind of what I talked about with Drew. It's just about the guys, right? Like I just had a chance to sit down with Trace and Sean, and we talked about it. I don't know if that's ever happened before with three guys like that, and just the expectations that we each set in the room, what we learned from each other. That's the coolest part for me. It's the Penn State Letterman Group is one of the strongest, deepest in the country and being a part of that's great and when it comes to what I did here specifically the field moments were fantastic memories I'll never forget but it's more so the impact I made on my teammates and the relationships I still have well you mean a lot to Penn State appreciate what you did for this place and your great teammate appreciate the time thanks all right, thanks, Adam. Well, we've talked to Christian Hackenberg. We've talked to Sean Clifford, some of the great Penn State QBs over the last 15 years or so on hand today, inspiring the future QBs here now. It's 10-0, a white team up at the half. We're getting closer to the second half of action when we come back on Big Ten Network. Into the second half now here at Beaver Stadium. 10-0, the white team up after the first half of the annual spring game. And a great crowd on hand. Penn State fans, Big Ten Plus delivers thousands of non-televised live events. Access to next day on demand replays multi of you to watch up to four games at once and a 24-7 Penn State channel just for you. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big Ten Plus dot com. Getting the spring football party started. Penn State fans, welcome to back inside. Jason Rush Jr., Matt Bill, and Adam Brenneman with us as well. Matt, kind of your typical start to a spring game. Defense a little ahead of the offense. But we've seen glimpses of different things and positives in different areas so far. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what you're going to see. And, this, and of course, we talked about it a little bit in the first half. This is an offensive line that still needs to gel. They don't have all the pieces back there. That's the first thing. We're going to see a very vanilla offense anyway because you're not going to show anything to anybody in the spring. Uh, you're just going to run basic offensive run plays and pass plays, and that's what we're seeing. And then typically, like you just mentioned, defenses are usually ahead of offenses, especially at this time of the season, and that's exactly what we've seen. So right now, the team that's ahead by 10 points is the team that has the better players. Well, if you, if you joined us late, one of the storylines we set up nice and early, new coordinators, of course, we're watching, defensive coordinator Tom Allen, offensive coordinator and Dakota Nicky. Let's join the third member of our crew, Adam Brenneman, down in the field. Adam, your thoughts on that first half? Yeah, guys, the reality is the defense has looked great on both teams, but when you're implementing two new systems, offense and defensive coordinators new, the defense is always going to move faster than the offense. On offense, there's a lot more terminology, a lot more personnel groupings to learn. The defense can line up and play fast and be aggressive. A lot of times it works out. We saw a lot of Duke Carter look really good. So the defense has been impressive. On the offensive side, I love what I've seen out of both quarterbacks. They haven't gotten the ball on the field that much, but they've taken care of the football, completed the pass, and controlled the ball in this crazy win. You guys can see. Bad hair day. There's wind everywhere. The papers are flowing. Playing quarterback in these conditions is not easy. Adam, it's nice to hear you say that defense is better than offense. I like to hear that. You finally admitted it. Matt, can I can I disagree with something? <laughs> Adam's always having a good hair day. It oh, doesn't yeah, matter no, the no. win. It yeah. doesn't matter the win for Adam. Always going to have a good hair day. <laughs> I mean, I just wish I would have brought some more product down here, guys. It's 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 too windy. It won't stay in place. <laughs> uh, yeah, only a tight end would refer to a, a bad hair day. See, a defensive guy, they don't care about that stuff. Let's see how the product holds up in the second half, hair wise <laughs> and field wise. There's Ooh, a nice, nice throw, throw from Aller to begin the second half. That was right on the money, and it came with some zip. 
Mari Evans on the receiving end. They're going to call it a sack, though. It was yeah. Jamel Lyons that they're going to give credit for this sack. Yeah, so he's going to beat Oh, he beat him to the outside fast. Yeah, he was there. Nice ball, too, though. Lyons, uh, sophomore last year, was his true freshman year. I was watching film on him, you know, in the spring, these spring practices. He shows up quite a bit. I like some of the stuff he does. He's yeah, pretty natural. Wallace. Natural with his hands. Does a nice job. Is, always maintains leverage. Has a pretty good burst after he gets and beats, the, and beats the guy to that next level. He's got some tools. Definitely can see 19 rotating in pretty frequently on that D-line as he continues to grow and develop this year. Some of the other names that you're thinking of up front when the fall does roll around. You know, guys like Zariah Fisher. We've talked about Dennis Sutton. Donnie Dennis Sutton, who was third team all Big Ten last year. Devon Ellis had a career best 26 tackles last year. Aller able to throw a ball over the middle. That is a ball that Wallace will want back, just in and out of his hands there. Yeah, I like Wallace in the open field. He can make you miss. He's got some good strength to him as well. He catches the ball pretty well. That's that's rare for him. Thompson, one of those situations maybe look at the field a little too quickly that time. Yeah. Ivy could be one of the returners this year for Penn State holding on to that ball. So players we can see a wide receiver as well. So we still look to see which receivers are kind of stepping up today. That'll be a theme and of course was a theme in some of the bigger games a season ago. Ten wins once again for Penn State. Continuing to rack up the ten win seasons over the last decade under James Franklin. But he's look, getting the wins. He's getting right? the wins and they're beating the teams they should be beating. There's, there's two teams. That always comes down to the same thing. Penn State's season will be always talked about, like, how did they beat Ohio State? Did they beat Michigan? And those are the two that are perennially up there, and Penn State's always right there. It's just they got to find a way to win. Those are the two that you couldn't score over 20 against that, of course, those are the two that are under the microscope. And James Franklin talked about it. He mentioned Drew Aller understands you are going to receive criticism and judgment based on those games. Michigan not on the regular season schedule this coming year with the elimination of divisions, but you do have Washington coming here. You have Ohio State coming here. This white team up 10-0 as you get the carry there, Quentin Martin. Devon Ellie's right there. You see him number 91 coming back. They'll, have a, they'll be counting on him for a lot of that inside game. He had a pretty good year. Season ago, it was the best run defense in the country last year. Just 75 rushing yards per game allowed. Very minimal on carries. The interior, a key part of that, with Ellie's coming back. Really experienced guy. They get pressure on Prabula, but he can elude that pressure pretty quickly in the crowd, ooing and awing at Prabula's legs because they know he can bring that dynamic to the table offensively for Andy Kotelnicki and this offense. So we talk about the Penn State schedule going to open up at West Virginia. Look at some of the Big Ten games going out west to USC. UCLA will come here. Washington will come here. Ohio State have the buys mixed in at good points as well. So you get an early buy and then week six is that. So you're you're going to the expectations for a Penn State fan of which I am one week six is where it starts. We're going to expect to win those first four games. Running backs get involved in the passing game. Quentin Martin able to keep his balance. Let's go to Adam down in the field with the head men's basketball coach Mike Rhodes. Thanks, Jason. Coach, welcome home to Pennsylvania. Love having you back home. You're now one year into the job. What are your takeaways from, from your first year? Well, I'm as excited as I was when I got the job. Just the people are, are tremendous. Working for Pat Kraft and, and his team in the athletic department, it's been a lot of fun. And he wants to keep getting better and keep pushing it, and that, that's been the charge all year. Yeah, 
Well, you've been on the phone all day today, recruiting, uh, talking to donors. What are the things you're working on in the offseason right now to progress the program? Just keep moving the, the program forward in all areas. Uh, you know, as much support as we can get, going out and getting players that want to come here for all the right reasons to be a part of Penn State and play on the biggest stage in the Big Ten. What can we expect from Penn State basketball next ne next season? Let's be better. Let's be better. We had a lot of momentum this year, some signature wins. Let's take it to a whole nother level, and let's make it run at it all. Appreciate it, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good man right there. Had a great talk with him yesterday. Got to get that hoop thing going now. It'll get going. It'll get going. Coach Rhodes coming over from VCU this past year, taking over as head coach for Penn State. And Good start to lay that foundation this past season as you see Rebulo once again showcasing the legs over on the sideline there. Abdul Carter had a phenomenal jump off the ball right there. July 13th, always a fun time. The BTN Big 10K returns to Soldier Field in Chicago for the fantastic 10K and 5K races and tailgate party. Scan the QR code and register right now at btnbig10k.com. And state fans, always a fun time. Make it over to Chicago in July. So many different fan bases showing up and showing out in the Windy City. Getting closer to summer, but first spring football. I'll tell you, the guy who is just getting phenomenal jumps off the balls, Abdul Carter off the top, he is just anticipating and just Man, what a great start he's getting off the ball. Looking to the right side right there, watch this. He's just gonna get, boom. He's moving before anybody else. And he's and he on on uh, on mark with that with the snap. That's just something you can't teach. You just have it or you don't, and he's got it. If you joined us late, Abdul Carter moving from linebacker to defensive ends this season. And he approached Tom Allen about wanting to do that. They embraced it both ways. His teammates have embraced it. Of course, that was something Micah Parsons did. He wore that number 11 before him. As there's a, a grab made over the middle and a good chunk through the air off the catch from Khalil Dinkins, one of the tight ends amongst this group that we talked about. He can make a really good one-two duo with Tyler Warren. Have some other guys in the mix as well at that tight end spot. Yeah, Dinks 6'4", about 250, runs pretty well. That was a nice little inside screen. Let everybody come, and then Dinkins come in behind him. That's good execution right there. Will Dinkins' dad, Darnell, was an NFL tight end for nine years. And they want to use the tight ends in different ways, several different ways. Might not see a lot of that today, but could be an interesting dynamic of the offense. And looking at the end zone that time for Harrison Wallace, a flag comes out. Maybe pass interference going to possibly be called here. Antoine Belgrave shorter, the early enrollee at corner. They're good right there. He just trips. I don't know if they, I don't know if that warranted a flag. They're hand fighting and he just trips. So they will move the ball up here and talk about how they want to make this offense more. Creative possibly at times. We mentioned the Michigan game, the Ohio State game, where you need that explosiveness to match up with explosiveness on the other side. Perhaps some different dimensions of how they use the tight ends. They've used them so well around here over the years. Could play into that. Going back to the ground game this time is Adam's going to jump in on the tight end talk. Adam, what do you think? Guys, I was surprised that Tyler Warren came back to school for another year. The star tight end on this Penn State offense. By all accounts, he had a second to third round NFL draft grade, but said, I'm coming back. I'm going to be the focal point of this offense, have a big year. He's long, he's athletic. But the most impressive part, Matt Milner will love this. He's physical, he's tough, and he loves to block. He's a true complete tight end. You don't find a lot of those guys. They're most tight ends that they bring up now are not very fond of blocking, but he's got a big, you know, he's 6'6. 260 pounds. He has a nice nose for blocking people. He's going to do well at the next level because there aren't very many of those guys. Actually, Adam was Adam Brenneman was one who could do that very same thing. He was a 
He's one of those guys with a wrinkled nose, you know, to get <laughs> shove their face in there enough times to get up broke a couple times. Matt, I'll, t I'll be honest. I always wanted to catch the football, though. I mean, I, I would block if I had to, but ah, you, you all you guys choice. want to I catch the football. I was catching the rock. I was catching the rock, baby. Give me the ball <laughs> all over the field. Come on. <laughs> uh, this time they go to the sideline, and it's Liam Clifford. Talk to Adam. Talk to his brother Sean, who's here earlier today. The former Penn State QB. That's Sean's brother Liam, who has really set the tone in different ways as a leader in the offseason and could be an important part of the receiver group. I've seen him make a few catches now. Yeah, nice coverage there also by Colin Dink because it's right on top of him. So as soon as he Liam made that catch, he was down. So that's good defense. Too. They went man down there inside. Everybody matched up. You had a little bit of a crossing route to the inside. He had him wide open. He missed him. One in Rappelier. See conversation there with his head coach James Franklin. It's one of the cool dynamics of these spring games is how, of course, intimate they are from a coaching standpoint. It's the place with the head coach who's right down there behind you. Yeah, the, the only difference between a regular game is he's yelling at you from the sideline instead of on the field. He's yelling at you a little closer this time. Yeah, exactly. Around, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seen on a few different occasions, some of those fake throws one way and then running it back the opposite way. Nice job by Kerry Jackson right there, linebacker. Makes a nice hit. Sure. Black rolling out on this third quarter of action. But the white team still up 10 zip. Thanks to Highmark for me. James Franklin and his group get another glimpse in the form of one more quarter of spring ball when we come back to Beaver Stadium for the fourth and final quarter of this blue-white game. The 10 nothing white team leads it going into the fourth quarter here. Looking back at some highlights, we'll start with Drew Aller. Aller, when he gets protection, he can see the field well. He's got a year under his belt. I think he's going to have a big year. He's got the strong arm. It's just a matter of protecting them enough to be able to get that ball out. The other guy I like is Harrison Wallace. You're going to see him. He's just got a nice, does a nice job of picking the ball out of the air, getting up the field right away. Does a nice job of separating here. Here you are, just sitting in the zone. But he's had a nice first half here. Pick. That didn't look good, except for the pick. <laughs> well, that, that connection can be very important between Aller and Wallace this year. Julian Fleming is an addition to the wide receiver core. Wallace, a guy who, again, feels like he could be due for a breakout year at 19 catches last season. He's battled some injuries with a starting spot on the line, and he's definitely up for it. Aller, year two, as the starting QB, takes the snap here, a quick throw, slightly behind his intended target. Tried to find his tight end, Rappelier. So, so he's seeing things well. Now you just got to get a little bit more accurate to the inside. You're right, he threw it a little bit behind him. And they're talking about it right there. Rappelier, maybe he turned to the outside instead of to the inside. They'll work that out. But I like the fact that Alar knows exactly where he wants to go with the ball right now. He's seeing the field really well, even with stuff in front of him. Lots of moments in time and practices still to work out that timing when the summer rolls around. Sanders to Haydak, the kicker there. Tacks on three more. Let's go down to Adam on the field. 
Thanks, Jason. I'm here with Olu Fashionu, Penn State, all-time great offensive lineman, top 10 projected draft pick. Olu, how's training been the last few months for the NFL draft? Yeah, no, training's been great. You know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I've been bracing every single step of the way. It's been great. Uh, we just finished the combine training, just finished pro day, so now I'm really just staying in shape, making sure that all of my technique stuff is good in terms of run blocking, pass blocking, and, you know, just taking everything day by day. How has Penn State, the strength program here, Coach Franklin, prepared you for the NFL process? Oh, I mean, you see it every year with, with the freaks that we have, you know, especially this year, uh, you know, with guys like Chop Robinson, Adisa Isaac, you know, it, it shows. And, you know, this year is, not, is nothing different. So, you know, at the end of the day, all credit in the world to them. We have a new look offensive line for Penn State in 2024. What can we expect from that group? Yeah, just sheer dominance. Honestly, that the group looks just as promising as ever. We have a lot of we have a lot of younger guys really stepping up. We still got older guys, guys in the room like Nick Dawkins, Manga Yuane, really stepping up into that leadership role. So it's looking really excited for them. Thanks, Eric. Good luck, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Oh, just had an interception a moment ago. That's a mean Vanover. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, Vanover, oh, he gets pressure, so he dumps it. <laughs> Vanover does a nice job picking that thing off. <clears throat> the defensive end just stayed home where he needed to be, and then just did a nice job finding the football. What a job to hang on to, hang on to that for Vanover. What did Tom Allen say at the half? He wants uh, three takeaways per game. His defense has two oh, yeah. so far in this spring game. Still time to get another. And Perbula kept that. To give KJ Harris the sack. Let's look at uh, James Franklin again. Getting pretty amped up here with Amin Vanover. Yeah, anytime a big man picks the ball off, he'll get dogged all the way to the sideline. Trust me. <laughs> the big man pick. <laughs> the big man scoop and scores. The big man picks. Yep, there was an it. extra layer of celebration. Yep. And some fun in the film room afterwards, too. Oh, that's that's where it's even more fun. There's the best part. Yeah, 6'4", 265 pounds. You know, those guys normally don't see the football. Um, and then when the ball's in the air and he picks it off, you got to get on him. We hadn't talked a ton about Vanover before that interception. He had a, a sack last year. Guy who has made his mark as a pass rusher, kind of dropping back in coverage a, a bit there as they go to the ground this time with Tyler Holesworth. Tonight, don't miss men's lacrosse when number four Maryland hosts Rutgers. Should be a really good matchup. Coverage for that begins at 7 Eastern time, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. You had a shot uh, right there of Tom Allen, and Tom Allen's an outstanding football coach, but he's an even better person. He's one of my favorites in the Big Ten. Just gravitate towards him so easily as Perbula is squeaking through traffic there. The players have talked about how Allen is such a good teacher of why you're doing something. There's a reason why you want to run through a wall, of course, but he tells you why and articulates it, which isn't easy to do. You know what the biggest thing is, Tom Allen? He cares. He genuinely cares about his, his guys. And he has a way of, you know, just getting that bond. He'll make you a better player. If you're willing to become a better player, he'll get you there. A former head coach at Indiana. You saw the resume there, so knows this conference so well in the new look conference, as he called it. It almost makes it more challenging as the catches made there by Wallace for defensive coordinators this year because, as Tom Allen pointed out, he got new styles coming into the Big Ten this yeah. year out of West Oregon, Washington, UCLA, USC. These are new styles of offense entering the Big Ten. And one of the things that's a big plus that uh, James Franklin did in, in getting Tom Allen is Tom Allen already knows the conference. Mm. Tom Allen knows how to recruit in this conference. Tom Allen understands how you have to win on the road in this conference. He's got all that stuff down and he's bringing all that into the Penn State locker room. Perbula looking to the air and that was well timed and picked off. It's gonna, it was a pick here. Unfortunately it would have been a sack and they're going to bring that thing back. But a nice play. So instead of the interception for Dinkins, who has had a fantastic day, Tom Allen still pretty charged up nonetheless. This is this is Tom. This is a typical Tom Allen right here. That's uh, he's he's genuinely excited about that. Now you're going to see 
they're going to be a sack right there he would have had and this ball wouldn't have come out. But Dinkins does a nice job of undercutting that ball and Tom does a nice job <laughs> of running and he's figuring if I'm going to run 50 I'm going to run 70. Can he mark it down as the third turnover he wanted yeah. to force it. I oh, think yeah, he can yeah. mark it down. Yeah, you'll take that. It was timed up very well by Dinkins who has had a great day and a guy that could be one to emerge at that corner spot that they're trying to fill with the losses of the likes of Kalen King Daquan Hardy and other names they're trying to replace at a spot that is really a deep room in the quarterback position they call it maybe the most competitive right now and deepest they've had from top to bottom. Yeah I, I think yeah, there's good depth there there's a lot of competition going on and I think competition makes you better but I think there's, there's going to be a pretty good secondary. What really makes good secondary is when you have good pass rushers and I think you're going to have that. Tonight, Dennis Sutton, I think, is going to be able to come off the ball pretty well, and you're going to have the same thing with Abdul Carter. I think you're going to have, you know, there's some there's some pieces in place for a good defense. Right, being able to get pressure on the QB definitely, of course, in turn helps out. Your secondary up the gut and into the end zone. Another rushing touchdown for Quinton Martin, the freshman with a bright future ahead at that running back spot. Martin's six. He's six one, about 195 to 200 pounds. He's got good quickness, good vision. He'll go where his eyes go. That's a really competitive running back room. It's uh, got a bunch of good kids in there. Meyer, the kicker on transfer from Tulsa. Gets the extra point to go. Let's go down to Adam on the field. Appreciate it, Jason. I'm here with one of the greatest players in Penn State history, Trace McSorley. Trace, when you walk out of that tunnel, come back on the field, what goes through your mind? Just all the old memories walking out of that tunnel with all the fans in the stands and the great memories we had on this field. It's uh, it's great to be able to get back here and, and relive it all a little bit. There's a lot of rumors that you and Bo Pabula are the same person. <laughs> I've been seeing them on social media. Very similar styles. What do you see out of Bo that gets you excited? You know, I think Bo's the playmaker. You know, when, they, when he gets in there, things tend to open up, and he's able to bring a different aspect to the game. You know, I really like what he's able to bring to the team, and I think he's, he's got a great mindset. I've been able to talk to him a little bit. Just as far as his mindset, how to approach things, he's got a great mindset, great approach, and he's got the best interest of this team in mind, and whatever they need from him, he's willing to do. You spent some time around Andy Kittlemicki now. You spent some time with him the other day. What are, what are you excited about with his offense and how Drew and Bo fit into it? You know, I really think the best thing he's going to be able to do is utilize the personnel that they have. They have a lot of guys, a lot of depth, and they're going to do what they can to get the best 11 on the field to make this team successful at, at, for any given play. So they can bring a lot of different creativity, a lot of things that the defense is going to have to react to within drive to drive or within one single drive. And he's very creative, a great teacher of why they're trying to do things. So I think he's got the foundational aspect and the creativity to be able to really make this offense this team pop. It's clearly a windy day out here. Tell us about how hard it is as a quarterback. What's it like trying to throw the ball in 30, 40 mile an hour winds? Yeah, when you, when you got a lot of wind out there, a lot of it is being able to you know, really spin the ball through the wind. You don't get a lot. The wind's going to really affect your deep ball accuracy and deep down the field stuff. Uh, so the short game accuracy, check downs, all that becomes super important. Being able to really just take what the defense gives you and then when those shots are there, being able to play into it and take them when they're, when they're there. So it's one of those games that when the wind's affecting you, you got to really be able to play into it, play within the system and take what's there. And then when the shots are there, be able to win, take them and hit them. Appreciate my man. Thanks, bro. All right, so we're covering the QBs over the last approaching decade plus here. Trace McSorley, Christian Hackenberg, at Sean Clifford earlier. Abdul Carter making the move from linebacker to defensive end. He just made another great play, Matt. Yeah, he's anticipating that snap, and he is dead on it. So he's in. When the ball snapped, he's already got a foot across the line of scrimmage. He's beating the tackle or tight end or wherever has him. It's just it's all about timing for right there. Abdul Carter, yeah, he's got it. It'll be fun to watch him this this fall. Because what's going to happen is because he's going to be a dominant player and is a dominant player, you have to account for him, right? So whenever you're playing him, you're going to have your best players lined up with him or you're going to have somebody on him all the time. You're going to double him. 
that's what he's going to have to deal with the whole the whole uh, season. Does that in turn open up some really talented guys on the inside? Yeah. So you can take advantage of that. It's all about numbers. Football is a numbers game. So you're going to have two taking care of one all the time. Then you're going to be able to sneak a, a guy down for a blitz or you know that type of thing and and create a numbers advantage for yourself. Raller guiding the offense back out here. This white offense that has several of the players who could be potentially starters, possibly second string. You notice they're up 20 to nothing. The final two minutes of this quarter will be traditional timing, but we have seen some really good bright spots on both sides of the ball today. Carter's definitely jumped out. Abdullah Carter on the defensive end spot. Been really fun to watch today. They'll probably chalk that one up as a sack. There's a lot of good things going on up here. I mean, there's there's some good individual play that's going on. The thing that makes the biggest difference, and we talked about it earlier, is how fast this offensive line can gel. It's got to get on the same page. It's got to get on the, all the calls. They got to be on this. They have to understand each other. It takes time. I think they'll get there. Center position and both tackle positions are the ones that going to keep an eye on to see who ends up winning those starting jobs before game one rolls around in the fall. Aller well protected here. Just trying to get that timing down. Total Nicky has a has a uh, he's got a pretty diverse bag of plays and he can keep your play caller can keep you off balance as a defense. And so when you couple that with the type of players what I haven't seen here in the Penn State offense I don't see a number one receiver and they maybe they have that guy uh, and, and I'm not seeing him yet or they not look this is very vanilla how they're calling this game right but I don't really see a number one so it'll be interesting to see how all that stuff develops when the fall comes and the coaching staff did tell us it's it's TBD as to who is that number one target right now by committee. Garrison Wallace, a guy who wants to emerge in that spot right on cue, makes the catch. Got to have somebody who can take the top off of everything and, and, and uh, just take the coverage. It doesn't matter if they line up at man, if they're going to play somebody over the top of them and in in sitting in the zone, like even say a, a, a cover two in a two deep zone. You're just going to run by everybody. I, I don't see that, but they're not they're not running those routes here today. Wallace began last year as one of Penn State's most important pieces at the wide receiver spot and as you said again it'll be interesting when that playbook does open up it'll be interesting to see how they use the tight ends to Aller going to float it up here Rapplier was the tight end in the vicinity there but that pass out of his reach Rapplier was open unfortunately he had run out of bounds so he yeah, did. didn't have to come in. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked out anyway into the final two minutes now of the fourth quarter. Is this where you want to maybe run something, another look at a two minute drill possibly? We saw that end of the first half worked out pretty well for them. Let's see where they set up here. Runkmeyer is the QB, and he'll have a chance here, two minutes and just inside of the 40. Davis, the oh, running back. Davis. Our experts discuss everything happening in the conference on Big Ten today. Weekdays at noon Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Spring football all throughout the month for you on Big Ten Network. Have had a fun showcase today. And a great crowd on hand here in State College. Things to review in the film moving forward. This is the 15th and final spring practice. Meyer will take the de facto sack there. Uh, yeah, he would have got. <laughs> he would have taken a shot to the face right there. Yeah, nice job getting off the edge. Looks like a mean band over. That's who exactly who it was. He had the pick from earlier. Yeah, he's, he's getting a nice jump off that ball as well. 
and he they got this thing timed up pretty good. Watch this jump he gets. See that he's he's starting his movement before the tackle gets out. He doesn't stand a chance. He's to the edge, and it, that's that's a sack every time. He and Soraya Fisher probably combined for about 400 snaps last year off that edge. He's got a lot of experience there and has established himself as a good pass rusher. Now you add on Abdul Carter, who has been superb today defensively. Brunkmeyer going to float it up. One in Logan Cunningham that time. Richard sophomore. Well, let's see if Blue can get on the board here in this last minute and eight seconds. Clock stops at a minute 08. It's King Mack on the coverage on that last play. Nah, ain't gonna happen since since White has the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But. <clears throat> Aller comes back out. The final drive of the day here. And a start with the flag and it might be a false start up front. Offense, yep. number 79, five yard penalty, first down. Addison Penn is moving before everybody else. Allard 12 of 26 today, 150 yards through the air. Has cut down in the offseason trying to work on his mobility as well. We know they can bring in Perbula to give it a different look. We've seen his legs on display today. You know, Allard moves pretty well. Yeah. He he's not void of movement. He sees the field pretty good. He's he's not. He's not as shifty as Prabula is, but he can he can run. It's not like he's going to be a sitting duck back there. He said that he feels like he's improved this spring with being loose, being free, having fun. Things that sound simple but mentally are so important. And of course, that coming with the command of the offense and getting to know Kotelnicki as well as new offensive coordinator. Back the opposite way that time as things kind of broke down. Credit the coverage. Okay, here's the, the defense. difference for a guy like Allen. His first year, all you're thinking about is don't mess it up. Yeah. In your second year, you're thinking, let's make a play. There's a big difference between those two attitudes. Allar's into that second, and he's got to believe it. Now he's got to believe. You know, he understands he can make a play. He has the skills. He's seeing the field. You just got to believe you can do it. You should take some time. Haller, a guy who opened his career with 311 straight passes without an interception, FBS record. He's a guy who has not given away moments because he rarely does throw an interception. Only two last season to the 25 touchdowns. You expect that to continue next season. And one guy whose name we haven't called a ton today had one catch earlier is Julian Fleming, his new target at wide receiver. He and Fleming have done a great job of developing rapport in the weight room, locker room, film room. So they're building things up. We're not seeing it all today, of course, but they're building up behind the scenes. And still looking for that number one wide receiver to establish is going to be a question mark. I agree. I agree with that. There's a couple guys you have. You know, Katron Allen's a little bumped up. Yep. And there's some, there's some guys we just we haven't seen today, but here Wallace saw the catch on the sideline he's a guy who we have seen today yeah I thought he was out of bounds with his foot yeah, yeah. Eh, maybe not that she's the official on the side just right there watching down it's very close there's some green between that toe yeah another tricky catch made near the sideline by Rappelier to follow that up Timeout. Offense. It's going to be just second. a gain of a, about a one there as they call a timeout and try to 
kind of go through a last minute scenario here in the fourth quarter. Correction. That's White's first timeout. They have one remaining. That's never not a good sign. See a player getting dinged up. Oh, that's a good player right game. there. That's a good pressure. You got the two cousins. He's holding his, I don't know what it is, hand or wrist or something. I've seen some good things today out of Cousins. Oh, yeah. Aller well protected there, but maybe better coverage on the back end from Jalen Kimber. Uh, another one of those transfers at corner who we talked about. Did they throw a flag, flag, though? They did around the spot where Kimber was in on the coverage against Pass Wallace. Defense, number three. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Kimber's felt like this has been a really good fit for him, a perfect fit. And already had a prior relationship with their quarterbacks coach Terry Smith. That's, that's a nice job on the defensive side getting your hands on him. Kimber stays in front of him, flips his hips really nicely in the middle of that. So that's good defense right there. Cam Miller is another guy at the corner spot that we haven't mentioned to is coming back. He's had reps. Some of the younger guys, Odavian Collins, Elliot Washington. John Mitchell and Antoine Belgrave Shorter are two early enrollees. They're actually both from the same high school in Jacksonville, Florida, Mandarin High School. Meanwhile, Aller is still working. Under minutes to go, and Rapelier is open and into the end zone. So there you go, a final minute simulation that works out for Aller and Rapelier. We oh, got on top so quick. Rapelier did a nice job. He's protected pretty well. The ball's down. He just, I don't know if he just got on top of him fast or a mismatch. Whatever the case was, there was a nice, nicely thrown ball. A little broken coverage that the Millbrook, New York native takes advantage of. He's a good blocker for them, too. As the extra point connects, 28 seconds to go from Ryan Barker. Let's see what we got. Okay, he's lined up off in the U position, and they are. Oh no, they were. In, they look like they were in man, and he just went to the wrong man. Yeah, and that's how he got open so fast. It's just a blown coverage. So now, 28 seconds, still the coach for James Franklin. He'll opt to hand it off. Quentin Martin's had a, a really good day. He's had a nice burst. Penn State fans getting their first look at the young freshman Time running back. Blue. Had over There's a thousand second. yards That's in his senior year of high school. Bell Vernon High School in Pennsylvania. So Dominic DeLuca there, zero in white. Another one of the linebackers who could have a good chance. At a starting role with Abdul Carter sliding down to defensive end. Meanwhile, there is some pressure there. Looked like it should be a sack. Good coverage again. Logan Cunningham looking for that reception, but it would have been a sack. And they're trying to hurry everything up again. 15 seconds left to go. Looked like Dennis Sutton came around the edge. Prabula again under pressure. Prabula steps up. Nice, accurate dart to a moving target there. And this should be uh, enough to, for a first down. And just five seconds left, though, on the clock. Nice job by Luke Reynolds making sure of that catch. Oh, that would have been a holding call. Deny Dennis Sutton. <clears throat> Had a great pass rush off that right offensive side. Well, even down to the final couple of seconds, some 
good glimpses at different things there in Vermeula yeah. managing the situation. Luke Reynolds, who could be a big future name at tight end, made a nice grab there on the move. But that will wrap up the four quarters of blue-white spring game action here. And now they'll go back and look at it in the film room. One stage of the journey, the spring section of the journey to 2024 complete for James Franklin and this Penn State team that has big goals ahead and expanded college football playoff. If you look at programs around the country that could have been a beneficiary of that the last few years, well, Penn State is right up there. Let's go down to Adam, who's alongside James Franklin. Thanks, Jason. Coach, how do you think your two quarterbacks played today? Yeah, I think overall well. You know, we stayed healthy today. I thought the quarterbacks distributed the ball well. We got a ton of situations covered, made some plays on the perimeter. The way we broke the teams up, I thought it would be a little bit more competitive score-wise, but overall pretty good. I don't have the stats in front of me, but overall I thought pretty good. Abdul Carter flashed a bunch today, moved from linebacker to defensive end. How would you assess his spring, spring practice? Yeah, he's had a really good spring. It's a huge transition to go from linebacker to DN. He's actually handled it better than I thought he would. Uh, not that he's not a super talented guy, he's just a difficult transition, and he's ahead of schedule. So uh, we'll get into camp and refine some of the details, but I think he's in a good place. What's the biggest question you want to answer about your team over the next six months? Well, there's a tremendous opportunity in the passing game on offense to really improve from now to West Virginia. What I mean by that is just it's hard to improve in the summer in the run game. Pass game, you can get a lot of work done on both sides of the ball, so that'll be important. We still got a ton of guys coming in that we think can help our program in terms of the high school guys we recruited. So getting them adjusted as quick as possible is important and then have a healthy competitive camp. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Adam. Thanks to Coach Franklin for joining us throughout the day. We're going to talk to a couple more Penn State players when we return here on Big Ten Network. Back wrapping up the 2024 blue white game here in State College. Jason Ross Jr., Matt Millen, Adam Brenneman down on the field for us today. And wrapping things up, seeing a lot of different elements on display. Let's go down to Adam. Thanks, Jason. I'm here with Abdul Carter, Penn State defensive end. Abdul, you made the switch from linebacker to DN this spring. How would you assess your spring? Uh, it's been good. Just another opportunity for me to learn something new, go through a new challenge, and adapt to something that I haven't done before. But I got great coaches around me. I got great teammates to help me out, teach me what I need to do, let me know what I need to do, and it's been good so far. Tom Allen told us that you actually asked him to make the move to the defensive end to get closer to the ball and be more disruptive. What went into that decision to want to play that DN spot? Uh, I just wanted to play fast, you know, just do what I do best, get after the quarterback, not have to think too much, just play fast, and just get paid. Get paid, I love it. Who's the one guy on offense that you went against this spring that, that balled out, that dominated, that, that you would say watch out for? Um, I would say Donka, one of our tackles, or guard slash tackles. He had a good spring. Uh, impressed the coaches, impressed the players, somebody to look out for. Appreciate Abdul. Good luck, man. Thank you. Abdul Carter, name of the day. Able to get paid, definitely. He had a big day, and they hope that translates over to the fall. It definitely looks like it will. Let's go right back down to Adam. Thanks, Jason. I'm here with Drew Allen, Penn State starting quarterback. Drew, what did you think of how the offense played today? Yeah, I thought overall it was a pretty clean day. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff we still got to clean up. Uh, we had, in the first half, we had a bunch of like pre-snap uh, penalties. We had a couple in the second half, so that's just easy communication with the O-line and everybody else getting on the same page with that stuff. But overall, I thought it was a really good day. Obviously, white team, we put up some points. Uh, O-line did a fantastic job of blocking up front for not only me, but the run game. Receivers made some plays today, so I thought we had a really good day overall. It's year two for you as a starter. Where do you think you improved the most th this spring? Yeah, I think really just confidence, command, and leadership. Um, I think my confidence is at an all-time high. I think that that's a really a contribute to Danny, Coach K, and Coach Franklin. Um, I always talk with Danny about how I want to play the position as quarterback, like just being loose, uh, free, and just just being myself, having fun out there competing. I think Coach K really allows the whole offense to compete like that. And um, you know, I'm just really excited. I think 
leadership has just been a big role, focus for me because just improving my leader, uh, vocal leadership has been a big important uh, emphasis for me this spring. Appreciate you. Good luck, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, Adam. Well, Matt, your final takeaways from today? Yeah, I think there's a lot of good things that happened here today. I, I, I like uh, I like the, the direction they're headed. I like what they're doing defensively. And you like the the uh, the variety that they have on the on the offensive side of the football. They can they can play with a running quarterback, they can play with a running game, and they can play with a big strong Drew Allard. So I, I think they're in pretty good shape. A lot still to work on, a lot to look forward to for Penn State football in 2024. That'll wrap things up from Happy Valley for Matt Millen, Adam Brenneman, our entire crew in the truck. You guys are phenomenal. Producer Bart Fox, director Bonnie Riley. I'm Jason Ross Jr. saying so long from State College.